After working with hundreds of Shopify stores, only a few are really leveraging meta fields. In this video, I want to show you how to max conversions with meta fields. And for those of you that are subscribed, thank you. We really appreciate you. And for those of you who haven't done so, so far, make sure you do it down below. We really appreciate it. We're trying to hit 35,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Now we made a few videos on meta fields and if you haven't watched those, I would encourage you to watch those first because in this video, I want to actually give you some practical examples on how to use meta fields so that you can increase conversions on your store. So we're going to be talking about a lot of different things and I'm going to be trying to go pretty quick on setting them up. So if you don't know what meta fields are, just very basic level, they're just some additional fields that you can add to either your products, your collections, even your customers, et cetera. So if I were to just give you a good visual of what this looks like, if we go here to our products and then I click on this random product here, Amarillo by morning, you can see the title of the product, that's actually a field. The description, it's a field. The images, the media, those are additional fields. All the variants, those are fields. Product organization, right? Product type, vendor, those are all different fields. And at some point you were very limited into the fields that you have because what you have is what you get. But now with meta fields, it just allows you to go crazy with it, right? And you can add actual custom data to, to your products. So for example, down here at the very bottom, you will have meta fields. And then here we have a complete look, we have a size chart, we have burn time, product sizing, product tech. So we have a lot of different options here within meta fields and you can technically create any custom solution with meta fields. So the very first one that we have and something that we've talked about in the past as well is going to be size chart. So one common challenge in online shopping is understanding product sizes, right? And to address this, you can actually create unique size chart for your unique products by using meta fields. So you can actually provide a clear and accurate sizing information per product and reduce the risk of your customers purchasing the wrong size, which will lead to fewer returns and just happier customers overall. I think a lot of people have done size charts where they just do all the size charts, maybe for their tops, their bottoms, their shoes, all within one sort of document for all their products. And that just becomes irrelevant, right? If I'm shopping for this t-shirt, I wanna see the size chart for this t-shirt. I don't wanna see the shoes or pants or anything else, right? I wanna see what's relevant to me right now. Obviously, there's apps out there that can handle this, but because we're doing meta fields, we're gonna be building everything out with our meta fields. At a very glance, we wanna to go to settings. We wanna to go to custom data. And then in here in custom data, this is like all the areas that you can add additional fields. For the majority of this video, we're gonna be focusing more on our actual products. But as you can see, there's a lot of different things that you can do with meta fields. So if we go to products in here, I've already have a, a size chart technically in here, but something that I do want to encourage that you do first before you come in here and create your size, your size chart meta field is because every theme is gonna be a little bit different. What I want you to do is go to your customizer and then I want you to go to your products and then go to your default product. And then under product information, I want you to add a block and then just see what options you have in terms of just adding this, this type chart, size chart. Ideally, I would want it to be a pop-up. I would want it to be a pop-up. So for this example, I'm using Dawn version 11, just so you guys know. But your theme, if you're using something different, it's gonna look a little bit different. But for this, for Dawn version 11, they do have the ability to do a pop-up. We can also do a collapsible row. Those, that would also be maybe a good option for a size chart. The collapsible row will look something like this, where at a glance, you can just click on it and the, that size chart, if I do an image, for example, it would just show right there. Now, to me, I think a size chart will be best with the pop-up, but again, if you don't have the pop-up, there are some other options like the collapsible row, and it could be named something completely different in your particular theme. But yeah, if we do pop-up, it's important to actually open this up, add it, you can change it, and I would probably have it somewhere near the, the selector for my, my size variant. So I can probably do it even right here. And then this will be called size chart. And then as you can see here, this particular version of Dawn only gives me the opportunity to do a page. So that's something important to, to look into because in this particular example, what we need to do is we need to create custom pages for our product size charts. The thing about this is that for your pop-up, if you're not using Dawn, you could see a different option to do image right here instead of just page. And it may give you multiple options, right? To do page, image, uh, to do some additional text, so you custom write you know, the actual size chart in here. But for this pop-up, it only allows us to link 
to actual pages. So that means that our meta field, our custom meta field has to be linked to pages. So now that we have this information here, it's gonna be important to then, when we go over here to our meta fields and we add a new definition, and let's call this size chart, call it size chart two. I don't remember if the other one, it could have been size guide, maybe I named it different, differently, but you just wanna name it something like size chart or size guide and just come up with the name just like that. This will just be automatically created. The description, you don't really need a description. And then the type, so this is where you will definitely want to make sure that you know what the type will be. So because we already checked this over here, we know that the type has to be a page. We have to link this particular product to an actual size chart on a page. So that means that over here on the actual type of meta field, what we want to do is scroll until we see page. So as you can see, we have page in here. Now we're not right now specifying any pages or anything like that. We're just letting it know like, I want to create this section, this field, right? It's called size chart and the reference is going to be an actual page. So I'm just gonna click save. Now, if we go to our products, we'll see that we have our size chart number two, which we just created. And if we were to fill this in, we can't fill it in because we have to select a page because as we selected as, as a type. And because we have these pages already created in the back end, we have the, all these options for, for pages. Now, that means that if you have images for all of your size charts, you have tops, bottoms, shoes, for example, then you'll have to go here to online store, you'll have to go to pages, and then right within here, you want to add size chart for tops, right? And right within here, you will want to add your image. So let's pretend that this is our size chart image for our tops that we just added right here. And then we click save. And then you wanna create that for any other additional unique size chart that you may have for all of your products. Now that we have the page created, now we can go back to our products, go over here. And then within the size chart, we can select the one that we just created. Click save. Now, because we're manipulating Amarillo by morning, on the preview here, I can actually change it to Amarillo by morning. And if we see the size chart that we have here, the pop-up, right now we haven't connected it to that particular meta field. So we created the meta field, but we haven't connected it right here within, within this. So we wanna click on here, to select a dynamic source, and then we wanna click on size chart number two, which is the one that we just created, and then click save. And if we click on the size chart, now we'll have the image that it's currently located in within that page. And it's just a nice little pop-up that has that image right there. So the beauty about this is that you can create just custom pages, as many pages as you want for all of your products within your store. And you will have a custom experience, right? For anyone coming to this particular product page, they will see this particular size chart and not see all the size charts for all of your store. Now coming to number two is a product highlight. So if you have a flagship product or just products in general, and you have just some additional information that you want to talk about, I call this just a product highlight meta field. You want to emphasize just key features, benefits, maybe about that particular product. And it just, it proves you and to the customers that, you know, this right here is a hero product. It has maybe some additional information that you want to include. And you can do so by just adding an additional section. Now, this one is, uh, it's a little bit more complex. And this is a combination of meta objects and meta fields. So a meta object is just a grouping of meta fields. This one, I'm not going to go full in depth on, on the actual how to create it, but I will show you how it looks here in the back end. If you are interested in creating this product highlight meta field slash meta object, I would highly encourage you to check out this video where I talk about meta objects more in depth and actually go over this example that I'm, I'm showing you right here and, and how to actually build it out for your store. So at a glance, we'll see that down here, we have this, what we call a product tech meta field. And then when we click on it, instead of select page, like we had on the other one, now we have to select entry, right? And then when we click select entry, you'll see that we have a Tempe Air as our, our entry for this particular meta object. But if we go over here to our content, you'll see meta objects in here. And I know this may be a little bit confusing. You're like, what the heck is going on? But just at a glance, know that you are able to just add some additional information, again, on a per product basis to highlight some of your product benefits or features. So for this example, I think what we were talking about was the fact that, you know, this particular, you know, shirt right here, the, it, the material may be something that a lot of people may not know about, maybe a, a new custom blend, or it could be something as boring as this is just 100% cotton. And we want to be able to talk about the fact that we use 100% cotton in, in these t-shirts. So you can do that by just having an additional section. So as you can see right here, we have our product information block up here. And then we look at this next one is an image with text block that has a heading, has a text, has a button, and it has 
has this image right over here. Now, all this information, we can actually link it with meta objects and that's what we've done, right? So just at a glance, just to kind of show you, we have the Tempe Air, let's just say this is a 100% cotton, right, uh, type of information. If we click on it, you'll see the collection or grouping of meta fields, right? We have the name of the tech, we have the description of it, and we have a nice little image for it. As you can see, we, we're referencing one of the products right now, but because we're using that Amarillo by Morning example, let's go to that product and add this to, uh, to that particular product. So we do a product tech, select entry, because that's the only entry that we have, we can do that. But let's say if you have 100% cotton products, you have maybe a 50-50 polyester cotton blend product, then you can create these meta objects. And then again, just go over here to your actual product and just link it. We click save on that. And we go back over here to our customizer. So you can go ahead and refresh. And then for this particular section, see removing that and then connecting the product tech, image of tech. So now we have the image right there. For the heading, we've already had that connected. So we have the name of tech. So if we were to do this from scratch, you'll see that if I were to type something, it will be showcased right here. But because I don't want anything static, I want that dynamic content to change from product to product. I have to connect my product source in here. And again, because we have the meta object, we can click on that and then the name of tech and it will showcase right here. But as you can see, we have the opportunity to do some additional information on a separated section within your product page so that you can just highlight some things about the product. This is gonna be very, very beneficial, again, maybe for your hero product or just the fact that you want to provide some additional information or highlight different things about the product. So I know this was a very highlight, high overview of meta objects and meta fields, but it does require just a little bit longer video. So I would definitely encourage you to check that out in order to know how to fully build something like that. All right, number three is adding some additional filters. Now, customers often use filters to narrow down their choices on their collection page and find things a little bit more quickly. With MetaField, you can actually add custom filters to all of your products and just get more granular and refine their searches based on maybe some unique attributes that would matter to them, right? This actually will simplify the shopping experience, it will increase customer satisfaction, and it will just encourage more conversions because the customer is going to be able to just find products that much quicker. At a glance, adding filters to your store would require you to add the, the app Search and Discovery made by Shopify. So if we type in on the App Store Search and Discovery, you'll see this right here. We already have it installed, but you definitely want to install this so it gives you the opportunity to add the meta fields that you will need for this. Now, okay, we load out the app and then we go to filters. And then in here, you'll see like the default, I think it's gonna be availability and price if I'm not mistaken. But if you were to add filter, you actually have all of your current resources in here. So, and in addition to that, you'll see that we have our product meta fields down here at the bottom. Now, the beauty of it is that, for example, you, the way that your store may work right now, like your color may be something that you have to create a custom meta field for your colors, or it could be that you want to have the customers be able to filter, for example, by the material, right? If you want people to just cut, you know, filter by 100% cotton or the 50-50 blend or, or whatnot, then you can actually create a custom meta field in order to filter by that particular thing. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to settings, go to custom data, go to our products. And right within here, we're gonna add a definition and we're gonna name it uh, product material. Now for the type on this, I think we're gonna do just a single line text. You could also do a, let me see if I have the option here. Actually, yeah, let's do, yeah, let's do single line text in here. I guess what I was trying to figure out is, yeah, this right here. So instead of you having to type it in every single time, you can actually limit to preset choices. So we could do automatically in here, you know, that, and then we could do 50-50 blend, and we could do, I don't know, polyester. That way you don't have to necessarily type this in every single time. You can just select from, from a dropdown in, in the backend. So now that we created the product material, we do have to make sure that when we go to our products here that we are actually selecting these things. Otherwise, Shopify is not gonna be able to, to filter anything. So product material, because we did the options, we can actually select 100% cotton blend, click save on that. And now what we can do is we can go back to our search and discovery app and we can add this new meta field that, we, that I've created and I can add it as an option to filter. So we can add filter in here for the sources. We scroll down, we see product material and we click save. Now if we go to our store here and we re refresh this page. You'll see that I under the default collection page in here and under filters, we have our availability, price, size, and then we have product material. So right now, because we've only selected one product with the 100% cotton, we have the option to select that 
as, as a material and that will filter out and only show me that particular product. So again, you can technically create anything, everything that you want to filter your products by. So for example, you know, size could be something where for pants, for example, uh, you could have the, the waist size as the meta field. You could have the waist, uh, not the waist, but the pant length as a different meta field. So you can actually filter by, by both. Uh, simultaneously, which is kind of cool. Now, something else that you could do is dynamic product badges. So product badges such as bestseller or new arrival can actually boost the credibility and desirability of certain products. And with Metafields, you can actually create dynamic product badges that change based on specific criteria, like I said, such as bestsellers or maybe limited stock. And these badges can catch the eye of potential buyers and increase the conversion rate. So at a very glance, if we look here at our default product page, you see that right above our reviews, I have just example text. So I just added a simple text section or block right within here. And what we can do is we can go to our meta field. So we can create a new meta field. So we're gonna go back to custom data. We're gonna go to our products. And then in here, I'm gonna do, yeah, just I'm gonna call it that product badge. And then this one is gonna be very simple. It's gonna be, yeah, single line text. We're gonna click save on that. I'm gonna have it where I don't have any drop downs or anything. I'm just gonna be able to type whatever I would wanna type. So we're gonna go to our product and to our Amarillo by Morning shirt product badge. I'm gonna do this one as a new arrival. Now, again, this is a little bit, you know, I would say custom work, right? Where you can't necessarily set up rules or anything for this, but you can set up a just a single, you know, line text right here for this particular product. So I could change that to bestseller. I can change that to limited item. Just, just some additional piece of information that we can have for this product. I'm gonna go change the preview to Amarillo. And then on the example text, instead of having that static text in here, I can actually connect it to my dynamic sorts, which is gonna be that product badge. And as you can see right now, we have that new arrival that's showcased right there above the stars. So again, this is a very simple, basic, but dynamic that can change from product to product just to highlight something about about this particular product. Hey, if you're interested in the website VIP day process that we have where we build and launch a Shopify website for you in one day, please click the link down below for more information. Now, these are just a few examples of how Shopify meta fields can be leveraged to enhance the user experience, drive engagement, and ultimately boost conversions on your store. The key is to think creatively and strategically about how you can use custom data, meta fields, meta objects in order to just expand a little bit more on the information that you're providing your customers right now and how it can help your target audience just make a decision just a little bit easier for your store. Obviously, we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg here with meta fields and meta objects. So if you have any additional comments or questions or Maybe some ideas that you've generated and you've done some really cool things with Metafields, let us know down below. I would love to see some other examples of how you are using Metafields nowadays. And like I said earlier, if you're interested in the meta object full breakdown and tutorial, you wanna check that video. Now.